How you guys doing? I'm Chris Ignato and you're watching my channel so thanks a lot for that. So I was thinking I did a comparison video between moths and butterflies and people liked it a lot so why not do one comparing dragonflies and damselflies because people mistake the two all the time. So I've got enough footage why not make the video? <laughs> I really hope you guys like this video which reminds me please hit like if you like it and I'd greatly appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. In the meantime let's get started. Now many people consider dragonflies and damselflies to be the same thing. They are actually not. They are two different groups of insects. In fact, damselflies get their name because they're rather dainty and girl-like, and dragonflies shoot fire from their mouths. Okay, well, maybe dragonflies can't shoot fire, but damselflies are a little dainty. <laughs> Let's get into the differences you can see between the two. Okay, first things first. Let's take a look at the wings. Now both types hold their wings differently while at rest. Dragonflies, like you see here, will hold their wings out horizontally when resting. Damselflies, however, will hold their wings vertically above their backs when they're at rest. But I have seen some species of damselfly hold their wings closed against their abdomens when resting. Now in dragonflies, the second pair of wings, or the wings furthest back, are actually wider at the base than the front pair. Take a look here. Notice how when it gets closer to the body, it's actually pretty wide. The front pair is narrower. The wings on damselflies actually taper as they get closer to the body. Both pairs are pretty much the same size and width. As I said, on dragonflies, they get wider when they get closer to the body. Another difference that's easily spotted is Damselflies generally have long, slender abdomens, somewhat fragile looking. In fact, it takes up most of the length of its body. When you look at dragonflies, for starters, the abdomen doesn't quite take up quite as much length as it does on a damselfly. The thorax on dragonflies really takes up a lot of space. Their abdomens are generally wider and a bit stouter than that of damselflies. And if you look here, the thorax, or the middle section, is quite large to handle all those muscles for the wings. Another difference that's really easy to spot, well, if they're sitting still that is, is their eyes. The eyes in dragonflies are really large. In fact, they're so large that they wrap around from the sides and almost touch in the front. In some species, they actually do touch. Just look at that head. It's all eyes. Now, of course, damselflies also have really large eyes, but they're more towards the side. And if you look at them from the front, they don't touch. There's a space between the two. Now, the larval or immature stages of dragonflies and damselflies is spent underwater. Both are perfectly adapted to live in aquatic habitat. They actually look pretty different from each other. But dragonfly larvae are actually really large, usually up to about 2 inches. Their heads are pretty big, their thoraxes are large, and so are their abdomens. In fact, the abdomen is often wider than the rest of the body. Unfortunately, I don't have it on film, but their jaw is a horror show. It shoots out and grabs its prey and pulls it back in. In fact, I'm going to include a link to a video on YouTube in my description below because you have to check it out. It is insane. Damselfly larvae are a lot smaller usually only about an inch or so, and have a characteristic trident-type tail, where it has three feather-like gills used for absorbing oxygen right out of the water. They blend into their environment just as well as the dragonfly larvae do, but again, they don't look nearly as threatening as the dragonfly larvae do. Notice those three feather-like gills at the back. I always call it a trident because that's kind of what it looks like in an aquatic lifestyle. Poseidon, trident, you can see the connection. So there you go. Dragonflies and damselflies. Amazing aerial predators soaring above the pond and vernal pool habitats. Hunting for prey. Landing on stones and leaves. Flying off again before you get a closer look. Always an exciting creature. Always an exciting find. 
If you're lucky enough to spot one close or have one land on your nose, better get a picture before it flies away again. So there you go. Those are the easy to spot differences between dragonflies and damselflies. Uh, I really hope you guys can spot the differences when you see one out in the wild now. And thanks a lot for watching, guys. Once again, I'm Chris Ignato, signing out.